Welcome back. We have completed shore leave, even though it wasn't really shore leave. Looks like um, we'll have to get back to regular missions though. And it seems like an unidentified alien ship wants to land in the middle of a populated city, which is all kinds of not good. So we should probably do something about that. Atabis is located in the Klingon neutral zone. The Federation won the colonization rights for that planet as per the Organian Peace Treaty. Both Federation and Klingon ships are allowed there. So we might see some uh, Klingon presence there. Our orders are to proceed to the Atabis system. Well, let's investigate some of this stuff first. Let's look up Atabis. Atabis, a small colony planet in the Klingon neutral zone near the Klingon border. Both Klingon and Federation ships are allowed in this entry as the Organian Treaty is in effect. I guess the only thing we can look up here. Alright, let's head to Atavis, which is number 8, which is up here. Alien ship in sensor range. I detect one Klingon battlecruiser on a parallel course. The Klingon commander is hailing us. On screen. Greetings, Enterprise. Welcome to Atavis. I am Captain Kla. What are you doing here? And I am Captain Kirk. Greetings yourself. I take it that this is not your vessel. What are you doing here? And I am Captain Kirk. Greetings yourself. No need to not be courteous to the Klingons. I appreciate your courtesy, Captain. I wish to inform you that we mean the colonists no harm. You have my word that I intend to take no action against them. As you know, this is neutral space. I have as much right to be here as you. If you do not question this right, I believe that we are capable of bridging any misunderstandings that might arise in this delicate situation. I have always admired the Federation's diplomatic abilities. I believe we both have more important matters on our minds. Until later, Captain. Well, it never rains, but pours. Mr. Sulu, take us into a parallel course with the alien ship. Aye, aye, Captain. Seems like the Klingons are also interested in this alien ship, which is not surprising, to be honest. Hopefully they will not interfere with what we are trying to do. Sensors appear to be experiencing malfunctions. Fascinating. Some anomalous readings are reoccurring. That would indicate that the ship itself is changing in unexpected ways. I have no explanation for the phenomenon. I have found at least one area that is suitable for transport. Okay, weird readings. Interesting. Can we heal them? No response from the alien ship, sir. Perhaps their communication system is malfunctioning? The Klingons regret that they are too busy to resume communications at this time. Okay, so we can't talk to them from out here, so I guess we have no choice but to beam over to the ship and see what's going on. We're beaming aboard the alien vessel. Have Dr. McCoy meet us in the transporter room. Spock, come with me. Lieutenant Uhura, if its communication system is malfunctioning, then we'll need you. Yes, Captain. Mr. Scott, you have the con. All right. Well, looks like we found people, at least. Maybe they can tell us what's going on. They, um... Look a bit shabby, honestly. This guy's just rocking and he's very, um... into this table, it seems. A comfortable looking room suited for small gatherings of people. Wonder what's going on here. This person is staring at the surface of the table in front of him, blinking from time to time. 
His complexion is sallow and he seems tired. He never looks up, but occasionally flicks away a speck of dust from the otherwise spotless table. Okay. Seems almost obsessive. Grinagog watches everything, eyes shining brightly. His legs are pulled up off the floor and he hugs his knees. An enormous grin never leaves his face. I guess his name is Grinagog? Narrator must have read ahead in the script. An ordinary looking table, utterly free of even a trace of dust on its upper surface. I guess he's doing a good job of keeping it clean at least. A potted plant. A potted plant. A set of books. A comfortable looking room suited. A potted plant. Captain Kirk, proud leader of men and women braving the unknown reaches of space. He hopes to find the way to prevent this ship from landing on the Atabus colony town, and he's dubious about what he sees in this room. The wise-looking science officer raises an eyebrow, wondering if there is some rational explanation for what appears to be quite irrational. The sharp-eyed communications officer prepares herself for anything, her dark gaze watchful. Yes, this time we get uh, Uhura with us. I actually also saw Michelle Nichols at a convention, much more recently, at uh, Emerald City Comic Con a few years ago. Although in some ways the epitome of the old-time country doctor, Dr. McCoy hasn't seen evidence of this kind of thing since med school. What kind of thing? We don't even know yet. We have to find a way to help these people. I find the situation in this room disturbingly irrational at first impression, Captain. I suggest we endeavor to understand what we see around us in order to make a sensible analysis. That is what we usually do. Captain, this place gives me the willies. I feel like I'm on a yellow alert without knowing why. Captain, individuals on this ship appear to be suffering, perhaps from certain mental disorders. Were I to examine them, I might be able to determine something more. Well, let's examine them, I guess. Slightly undernourished. Sluggish pulmonary and circulatory conditioning. Doesn't get nearly enough exercise, I'd say. Brainwave activity uneven. I'd need a battery of tests to be sure. This is a complete new race, after all, but he may be suffering from some blood chemistry imbalances likely to be affecting his mind. Interesting. Wonder what caused that? His mental activity is very high, but doesn't seem pathologic, Jim. Respiratory activity indicates a high degree of anxiety by comparison with others of his race. Now that much stress is unhealthy if this is a chronic state. Alright, seems like they both um, are not in perfect health. I think what we can find out about the plants. This plant seems healthy, Jim. This plant seems healthy, Jim. And this one? This plant seems healthy, Jim. Guess they're doing better than the people. We can at least, um... Try and talk to them. Go away! I'm busy. My table must be kept clean. Okay. Well, he's not very talkative. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What's going on here? Who's in charge? Nobody's really in charge. Maybe the phase. That's one of the things that makes me so nervous. Nobody's really in charge. I try to take charge of little things, like making sure the lights work. I don't like the dark. Are you going to be in charge now? Maybe you should talk to the phase first. The phase? What's the phase? That's a good question. Why don't you just tell me what's going on here? If you need help, the Federation has many resources. Would you tell me about this ship? Why are you going to land in a town on Atavis? Why didn't you respond to our hail? I doubt he knows that. It doesn't look like it. Faze, why don't you just tell me what's going on here? If you need help, the Federation has many resources. Let's try to offer some help. We've been doing fine for a thousand generations, Captain. Maybe more. 
We're happy here, just waiting for the ship to return to the builders. <laughs> that's, that's the promised time when we come home. We don't need any help. Who are the builders? The builders? I'm assuming the people who built the ship. Let's get back to the main subject. Maybe you can tell me about your people. Who are the builders? The builders are the builders, of course. <laughs> Us. But a long time ago. The phase can explain it better. I get confused sometimes. <laughs> the builders built the oratory. The room there to the south, they built the garden north. If you're hungry or if your head ain't feeling right, there's food and such in the hall. Through there, the west door. The rest hall is through the east door, but you might have to wait for one of the beds. The builders were just so logical. They, they thought of everything. <laughs> you can go anywhere. You know, Jim, I don't think there's much more he can tell us. I can take a tricorder reading on him if you think it's appropriate. I already did that. Yeah, seems like something weird is going on with the people on this ship. Definitely doesn't seem like they're... 100% healthy. Can we do anything for them? This isn't a medical matter, Jim. It might be. This isn't a medical matter, Jim. Alright, fine. We'll look around. Um... Let's head left. Yep. Nope. Two more people. This appears to be a room to sit or talk or relax. A kind of all-purpose living space. Is it part of the same hall? This individual wears a placid expression as he piles one block atop another, playing quietly. The incongruous thing is that he appears to be a full-grown adult. Noticing that you're looking at him, he raises his arms to you with a hopeful look. Interesting, yeah, he seems to be behaving more like a child. This individual appears somewhat elderly, but he holds his head proudly and his shoulders are thrown back. He nods benignly at you and a yellowish crown slips down a little lower on his brow. He clenches a short silvery rod with a bulbous tip firmly in one hand. Maybe he's in charge? Or maybe he just thinks he's in charge? An ordinary chair. Originally similar to others in the room, except someone has nailed the legs onto a raised platform, increased the height of the back, widened the seat, and glued on broad and blocky arms. Bright paint in red and purple and gold gives it a garish appearance. You think it's meant to look impressive, but it just looks rather pathetic. There's a bit of a hodgepodge chair, I guess. A plant. A piece of cloth. A simple sliding door of reasonable dimensions for a person to walk through. A plant. A book. Multicolored blocks, suitable for a child to play with. Okay. The captain wants to know what these people can contribute to his efforts to put a halt to this ship landing on the colony town. And he's dubious about what he sees in this room. Yeah, it doesn't look like um, anybody we've seen so far will really be able to help much. Say something up this here? This appears to be a room to sit or talk. I have no idea. I cannot make that out. If it even says something at all. A normal looking switch. A switch? Maybe a light switch? The Vulcan raises an eyebrow, finding the situation quite illogical. Bones seems to be thinking that the rather heavy individual sitting on the floor has the look of someone who has been emotionally deprived. Someone who would benefit from some closer contact with others. Lieutenant Uhura shifts uncomfortably under the intense gaze of the elderly fellow on the throne-like chair. Okay. This looks like he's interested in her. That's kind of creepy. This situation calls for a good diplomat or a good psychiatrist. Well, I guess the diplomat will have to do. These two individuals may be able to tell us something, Captain. 
Maybe, maybe not. I'd like to examine these two individuals, Captain. Captain, the man in that throne-like chair seems to be staring at me. Perhaps I should try to talk to him. Perhaps. Let's do some scanning first. I believe this person has reached adulthood physically, Jim. But brain activity scans suggest he may have suffered a failure to mature intellectually. Remember, this is a new race, Captain. While these people are clearly humanoid, I may not have all the answers. This individual is a bit elderly, but not in too bad shape when you take that into account. He seems to be suffering some brain lesions that might be genetically linked. Nerve degeneration in the lower back. Yeah, these people definitely don't seem to be doing too well. That light is flickering. It appears to be a standard electrically powered illuminative system. However, this one appears not to be functioning at peak efficiency. That's what I said, basically. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Blocks are an unusual organic substance high in compounds of phosphorus, nitrogen, ammonia, and calcium. In this form, the chemicals are inert and make a practical non-toxic toy. Okay, interesting composition for play blocks. Um, let's see if we can talk to these people. Methinks you peasants should know your place and speak only when royalty speaks first to you. Okay, seems like this guy thinks he's some kind of king and doesn't want to talk to us. It's not very helpful. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Jakesy. What can you tell me about this place, Jakesy? The sweet faced adult shakes his head no. He is, uh, not very talkative. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Shake. What can you tell me? Can I play with the blocks, Jacobson? The sweet faced adult shakes his head no. Alright, doesn't look like we're getting anything out of him. Can we get the blocks? Although evidently an adult, Jakesy looks as stricken as any child, his eyes filling with fearful tears. My blocks! Don't take nice blocks, please! Captain, I don't think it would be right to take these away from him. Perhaps we could find something he'd take in exchange, Captain. The adult with a youngster's mind holds his arms out to you. All right, all right. We won't take the blocks. How about the book? I don't see how these can help us, Captain. The cloth? I don't see how these can help us, Captain. Fine. Can we use the switch? Um, okay. Then turn the light off, it opened the panel. Can we do anything with that? Away, Violet! What do you think you're doing? Yeah. Looks like, um... This guy's in the way, and he doesn't want to talk to us. He was, however, staring at Uhura, so maybe he'll talk to her. to speak. Okay. Let's speak. You stand out remarkably, bearing yourself like a queen. Yet these carls do not treat you as royalty. Surely you have royal blood flowing in your veins? Bloodlines do not dictate who we listen to. We weigh a person's worth by their actions. My leader here is Captain Kirk, an admirable man. Speak with him. That's the truth, but... I don't know if he will go for that. My ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. Might be a good idea to go along with him. Royalty recognizes royalty, does it not? Look on me and decide for yourself. You will know. 
Hmm. Not sure if he'll fall for that. Bloodline. My ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. I'm gonna go with this one. Oh, I am so glad to find another of royal blood. I am so tired of sitting here all the time, but whenever I leave, thralls and lesser folk plant their fundaments on the great throne, and that's just not acceptable. I know you'll mind the proprieties and not let anyone else sit on the throne. And now, I'll finally be able to go and get some rest. Okay, well that worked out nicely. I guess it's a good thing that Uhura came with us, even though that was not the reason why she came. Now can we do anything with this panel? You managed to untwist a length of wire and a light bar. All right. Wires and a light bar. A sealed tube with connectors at either end, which can provide illumination when inserted into an appropriately powered socket. Basically just a fluorescent light, I guess. A long twist of insulated wire. Could be useful. Don't think we can do anything with him right now. So let's keep on heading to the left. <laughs> The tricorder informs me that the Klingon boarding crew has just beamed into the adjacent room, Captain. You are Kirk. I am Kla, Captain of the Paul Yar. This is my aid. These Klingons are so innovative in their introductions. Shh. I'm Captain James T. Kirk, commanding the USS Enterprise. These are my crew, Science Officer Spock, Lieutenant Uhura, and Dr. McCoy. What can I do for you, Captain Clark? You can avoid interfering with me or my man as we look around the ship. The same as you. And with the same air of mutual goodwill, we will avoid interfering with your activities. Unless we have cause to think your actions in some way threaten us or the Empire we represent. We do not threaten the Klingon Empire, Captain Clark, nor its legitimate representatives. Then there will be no difficulties between us, will there? We will leave you to your investigations now, and carry on our own. You won't mind if we're in the room, will you? We'd consider it a mark of our mutual respect, Captain, if you don't get in our way, and we won't get in yours. I was wondering when they would show up. All things considered, that went pretty well. Wonder what this room is. This room gives the impression of being two disparate things joined for an obscure reason. There's a space to eat in, and a medical area that doesn't fit with the place to eat paradigm. At least it wouldn't fit together at most places in Federation space. Yeah, that is kind of a weird thing to combine. You don't usually go to the hospital to eat. The only time you eat at a hospital is if you're either in hospital or visiting someone. A mechanized food delivery and recycling system not unlike what you see every day aboard the Enterprise. An unremarkable piece of furniture offering nothing but a flat surface from which to eat while standing up. Not even a chair? It seems kind of weird. A wan-looking female stands dejectedly, her shoulders slumped. Her whole appearance expresses deep worry and bone-crushing weariness. Well, she does look kind of sad, doesn't she? A computer terminal with various access ports, a scanning rod, and a workspace. A computer ter- A computer- A large machine made from a red metal. That's not very enlightening. Anything wrong with this woman? Female, just moving into middle age. Her overall level of health is fairly good. Vital signs are down marginally, and mental readings indicate a chemical array typical of severe depression. However, there are high levels of tranquilizing chemicals in her bloodstream. 
tranquilizing chemicals? That's weird. This mechanized food delivery and recycling system is similar to the Enterprise's system. One significant difference is that it includes a scanning feature on the person making the request for food. I also note that the machinery accepts used dishes and reusable materials for recycling. Since this ship is a narrowly enclosed system, Captain, of the various mental conditions we have seen among the inhabitants of this ship, most, although not all, have been non-violent. Dr. McCoy may need to examine this data further, but I believe through the food dispenser, the individuals aboard this ship are regularly medicated, often tranquilized. That's one way to keep people under control, I guess. I'm just a simple country doctor, not a magician. There are some things I just can't fix. All right, well, I thought since he said McCoy should have to look at the data, but uh, I guess he can't. This appears to be a kind of all-purpose first aid station and medical dispensary with computer-aided diagnostics. Captain, from the configuration of equipment here, it is possible for someone to use this machine as a workstation and prepare medicine for someone who, for example, would be unable to come to the station for treatment. Okay, so it's both a treatment station and a workspace. This machine appears to be made from solid uranium steel. It appears to contain computer processors for the medical unit. I detect numerous redundant circuits and fail-safes. Reminds me of Vulcan anatomy. They do have some redundancies, yeah. A metal and plastic construct, slightly over a meter high, built into the floor. Also known as a table. The captain is unmoved by the appearance of this room. The Vulcan scrutinizes the room, finding it functional but with little to spark the interest of his analytical mind. The lieutenant is concerned by the weary look on the face of the person in the room. Bones seems to find these facilities of particular interest, especially the medical area. The food supply may be at the crux of the problem on the ship. I recommend a close examination of the ship's food whenever possible. Captain. It appears that the inhabitants of this ship take it as given that food and medication go naturally together. With all respect to Dr. McCoy, I would dislike having a physician medicating all food that passed my lips. Yeah, that does not sound good. And may well be the reason why everybody's condition on this ship is so bad. Captain, I think that woman looks like someone we should talk with. Captain, I'm seeing all these people as being under medication, or needing to be. And they're all unhealthy in one way or another. It really doesn't surprise me that they associate food and medicine. Their veins are probably always swimming with some chemical stew. Seems like it. Let's try talking with this woman, though. Hi there, I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Seems kind of a chipper greeting for somebody who seems so sad. Are you feeling all right, ma'am? Can you tell me what the problem is? You look so sad. Would it help to tell us why you look so down? Try this. Do you have any children, sir? I do. A son. And I've just not treated him right. Tried to do right, but everything died. And I can't give him what he wants. What I think he needs. A mother's job can be difficult. I'm sure you did your best for your son. Would you tell me about him? What is it you can't give him? Yeah, I wonder. What died? What died? Did you hurt somebody? Something? A mother's job can be difficult. I'm sure you did your best for your son. Would you tell me about him? What is it you can't give him? Little Stan Bob. I try to feed him right. Give him safe food. He really likes fresh fruit. Now he can't have it anymore, and it's all my fault. Ma'am, hold on to this idea. It may not be your fault at all. We'll try to help. You have my word. Your son still loves you just for trying. Of that, I'm certain. He wouldn't want you to be so sad. Ma'am, hold on to this idea. Your son still loves you just for trying. Of that I'm certain. He wouldn't want you to be so sad. The woman's eyes brim with tears and she can't continue the conversation. Poor woman. I hope there's something we can do to help her. Let's check out this food supply machine. 
The machine roars, lights blink, and a prepackaged container of food is deposited on the tray. I wonder if there's any medication in there. I'm just a simple country. I guess we can't tell. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. The box of prepared food is light and compact. Really? Nothing we can tell about this? A reprocessed oh, cellulose-based container with prepared nutritional components inside, appropriate as a meal for one individual. In addition, the food appears to be laced with a variety of drugs, which Dr. McCoy could better analyze than I. As a meal, the food in this little box is a tad high in carbohydrates by human nutritional standards. Still, it would supply about one quarter to one third of a day's average caloric needs and includes protein, fats, fiber, bit of spices and flavorings. There are also drugs in the food, some of which we added, you know. It's quite heavy on the alkaloid tranquilizers. Oh, well, that seems to be the um, wrong description at the end there. And um, is a little bit of a spoiler. We'll continue looking around this ship in the next video.